<coughs> y que se interesa en el país por su vida. Estás en las contras. Ya la gente perfecta, ya te das contras. No me tenía que decir que me iba a pensar. No, ni la sola, eso es. No, 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 in the remote centers and in the studio to the third and last day of our ICT based course on IoT in manufacturing. So during last two days, uh, we had different sessions in which we have listened to the experts and we have gained knowledge about what is IoT, what are smart machines. And yesterday we also had a practical session where the uh, design tech people showed how to use MATLAB to acquire sensor data from through cloud. Today we have uh, two things in the first session. One is a case study on the smart city. Chandigarh is a, uh, has been chosen for smart city project. And uh, Dr. Sanjay Batesh, who is with us right now and who also was with us on Monday morning. So he is the main person in that project. So they are doing a lot of work. Uh, uh, slowly and steadily bringing up the different uh, parts of the uh, city to the cloud for the benefit of the citizens. So Dr. Batesh will discuss with you today the smart city project first along with uh, uh, Mr. Prab Simran who is the network administrator in Punjab Engineering College. Dr. Batesh though is head of computer center in Punjab Engineering College and actively involved in various technical activities. But otherwise, also, he has been given very important uh, other assignments, like he is the coordinator of TechCube 3. Earlier, also, he was coordinator of TechCube 2. He's also associate dean of uh, student affairs. So he's a very busy man in nutshell and uh, a very competent man technically. So I am very grateful to him that despite his busy schedule, he has spared the time and he came here on Monday morning and today also. And also he takes uh, classes at master's and uh, bachelor's level. So after discussing with you the smart city project, he will now today demonstrate the acquisition of data through cloud using the Raspberry Pi uh, module. Right? So as all of you know, do you know Raspberry Pi and many more platforms have now come up, uh, which basically makes it uh, convenient to be used by people who, who who are not from electronics engineering background also so they can program them they can interface sensor actuators they can acquire data they can implement control algorithms so this session is going to be a very uh, important session for today and after that in the next session after tea break i will discuss with you iot enabled manufacturing systems where i will discuss with you uh, uh, few case studies also and I also give you an overview of that how manufacturing is affected by IoT. After that we will have uh, at uh, quarter to one we will have the valedictory session uh, where Dr. B.S. Pabla and myself we both are coordinators for this program will be present here. So I request the centers that they can also invite uh, their uh, principals, directors or head of the departments and to the validatory session at quarter to one. So Dr. Bathish will start now. We'll have a tea break at 11.30 and quarter to 12, we'll start with the next session. So I welcome Dr. Bathish and Prab Simran and uh, request them to please start. Thank you very much, yeah. sir. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, Professor, uh, the NITA team, the organization, uh, Professor Thami, I'm very much thankful uh, that they have invited me to uh, deliver the lecture basically on the IOTs as well as to cover up a few of the things related to the IOT and the smart cities uh, where we have done a uh, few of the applications which has been the APIs has been uh, integrated with the one single platform which is a CDP platform uh, will demonstrate data also and few of the things which is lively it's a live data which will show you at how the things that are integrated 
uh, with the CDP platform and how we can look into that and monitor those things and how it looks like the command control center, uh, basically what we have implemented at Punjab Indian College Chandigarh. So, sir, thank you very much for inviting me and definitely I'll try to uh, cover those things in time. Going into the discussions as per the my previous lecture, we have covered up the IoT, where the IoT plays a very important role. Uh, it's many of the things uh, which uh, have been covered up, like consumers, homes, smart infrastructure. Uh, securities, surveillance, healthcare, transportations, retails, industrial, as well as other things. These all have been uh, connected through the internet, and these things <coughs> play a very important role. Uh, yes. And a very important role in this. In the see in the presentation, we have shown you that these things have been interconnected, and everything is dependent upon the internet. So what we have covered up so far uh, earlier in my slides that the IoT, where this is totally dependent on the network and the internet. The consumer, it touches smart infrastructure, it touches security, healthcare, transportation, industrial retails, and other things. So these are the few examples where you can do. These are the applications which uh, persons have, some, some has created some applications. And these applications have been applied. Just see one first example, where you can just uh, uh, the mobile phone senses uh, there is some sensor is there with the app and whenever you just bring it near to the uh, see door it will open up the door so this is one of the application where the iot you can write down an application and just uh, connect your sensors with your iot and uh, applications where you can just switch on and off the room or door or anything else so it is a switch so it plays an important role. This IoT is one of the examples I have taken up from the internet. This is just uh, <clears throat> the examples that either you can open up your lock, either you can use this thing at any anywhere else. Now just see in the uh, third picture, <coughs> that is a virtual screen is there where you can uh, see, you can say anything else that will do whatever you want to say, right? Say for example, anything you want to, say switch on the television switch on the microphone switch on the music or switch off the music so this or virtually you can whatever you want to ask that can be this these things can be happened nowadays with the RTs, right so it's a virtual screen where you can do many things so it will also tell you your the day schedule that this today is your meeting at 8 30 and whatever you want to specify anything else that can be possible with the iot's now uh, related to the smart cities, the IoT plays a very important role. Yes, uh, this smart cities mission is to intend promote adoption of the smart solutions for the efficient use of the available assets, resources, infrastructure with the objective of enhancing the quality of the urban life and providing clean and sustainable environment. So the infrastructure is very important here. The infrastructure services will be the key focus area like transport, public safety, traffic, water, power, waste, disposal, lightning, telecom, and e-governance. These are the services where we are, the smart city are focusing on that particular things. That will help you, the citizen of the city, where when we are focusing on these things, this will help you in that, and this will create a smart city. Then few of the things can be done in these areas where the work is still going on. And yes, some of the key focusing areas are for the smart cities, which we have integrated at our platform also. There we'll show you. 
inclusion of the new innovative solutions for the startups is the focus area also in the smart city innovations uh, that has been done for the smart cities like see now any uh, startups or the uh, new newcomers want to set up their own uh, business or a platform they have uh, the right to showcase their things uh, in this smart city so that uh, uh, that can be integrated with the smart city platform. So this is also one of the area where the newcomers are being allowed to participate in smart city. <laughs> that same platform. So making city smart to make cities uh, smart, we need an integrated approach to modernize uh, city infrastructure, the technology to improve efficiency and capacity to the city services. The smartness in the city lies in the integration of the core city subsystems and enabling seamless service delivery the digital master plans have to be uh, into the city master development plan see these are the focusing area where even we used to call the smart city where the, everything should be smart like in the campus i'm just taking the example of our campus we can say our campus is smart whenever somebody enters into our campus everything is uh see monitored from the main gate to the whatever he is doing inside the campus and second thing is whenever it is on when the outsiders enters into the network so everything has been monitored and we can define the policies also that for how much time the guest can enter into your campus and how much time you can utilize your network so that is the smartness of the campus that automatically if the guest is enter it he will get in a connectivity of the network and at what time he will leave our campus, it will automatically disconnect. So this is a smartness. So you don't have to depend upon the person that uh, the person is uh, entering into the campus and he will write an application to somebody else that I need in your network and I want to do something else. So the smartness here is the automated system, which is a smart automated system where the person enters into the network and it will automatically give you the connectivity and whenever he leaves the campus it will uh, disconnect from the network so this is the smartness and the, the other thing is the the controller where the controller will look into the whole uh, 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 the connectivity it controls everything wherever you go whenever wherever you uh, move so it monitors each and everything the disconnectivity is or the any uh, failure in the network is is 0 0.0.999 percent. It's very much fa uh, failure is not there in 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 this controller based system. The other thing is the whenever you say something as on the cloud, that is is something which is uh, 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 the smartness is there when everything is on the cloud. Your data is on the cloud, so you can view and watch your data and you can analyze your data from anywhere else so that is a smartness and whatever the areas we have touched up in the iot's that is transportation health and education sector etc many things have been we have covered up last time. so that all things should be on the cloud so that we can control each and everything we can manage everything and that relates to the smart cities also so smart city plays an important role iot also plays an important role in smart cities so going into details of the this one see the city infrastructure we have shown here is the physical infra social infra in the environment where we have touched up energy water waste mobility real estate which comes under the physical infra and social infra is the health education safety then the culture and the citizen services in the environment also we have uh, uh, see that uh, uh, pollution can uh, one of the factor uh, then the uh, disaster management then the uh, other city uh, specific things are there so <clears throat> whenever there is a good governance that will these things can be easily can be we can uh, modernize those things and which will be helpful to the city people uh, that is everything we if we integrate those things uh, and we will give the this platform online to every citizen then this will be the easiest way for everybody to approach anything else like uh, the either the physical or the social or the environment media so online citizen services social media helpline can be the one of the everything should be if online then everything uh, the, the cities people will get the whole benefit about this 
so the city <laughs> performance dashboard, dashboard should be there cities online portal should be there capacity building through online trainings and uh, uh, the analysis of the data has to be that should be online available with each and every one so this uh, in the governance just see the <laughs> the solutions that has been shown online uh, death certificates birth certificates online trade license online public grievances gas property tax estimation online building plans online self estimations assessment payment of the property tax online utility bill payment actual based accounting system that these are the solutions where the technologies the payment gateways mobile gateways the citizen collaborations gis based so what the impact on this is basically sig significant improvement in the revenue collections reduced in the time for grievance redressals improvement in the turn around time for the municipal services improved citizen satisfaction increase in the productivity improved the accountability transparency in the services and the operations and improved city operations and the maintenance so the ict intervention with this governance will give you a lot of impact on these and this will improve the, these many areas while collecting the revenue as well as other citizen satisfactions so second area is the water where we can just uh, the water scada system has been implemented so we have water <laughs> quality meters or the smart meters have been uh, uh, we, we have to just integrate smart meters where you can easily monitor each and everything what is the consumption consumption of the water what where is the leakage of the waters you have just put up the sensors there and you can find out where the leakage is and in which area the most where is the utilization of the water which area the utilization is less which area is utilization is more so you can smartly you can know know each and everything about the water area level the consumption of the water the leakages of the water and with this that can be you can just find out on your if you can create an app you can find out your usability on your mobile phones of your see what how much water consumption has been done monthly at your uh, own uh, see home and see if there is a smart smart meter is there uh, if you that has been implemented so the, the work is still going on on that also will show you how much things we have integrated on this smart city platform then the waste management yes some sensors are to be put up on the dustbins or the waste materials uh, can be just find out online services analyze the uh, those things sanitation waste collection uh, the system where the sensors have been uh, uh, added up with the uh, bins which can tell you how much bins have been em empty and how much uh, which of the bin is totally full so we can send the information uh, immediately to the person that to collect the garbage area from that particular location so that this can be controlled centrally uh, and this while while we have sh shown here the sensor based sorting of uh, the uh, dust bins have been there then you can simulate those data and you can just find out where the garbage collection is has not been done so you can take out online data is there you can take out the actions you can send the uh, messages to the persons through monitoring th those things online that uh, you can control each and everything of uh, related to the waste management so what is the impact on this is live performance you can manage uh, if you can have this if there are problems uh, we have defined problems monitoring is manual so physical visit required to verify the employee's performance garbage keeps lying in the city for extended periods overpayment or payment is usually linked with the number of trips mileages weight difficult to monitor vehicle movements now these are the problems related to the waste management now what is the solution that is attendance with the handheld biometric devices you can implement tracking device installation on the each vehicle so you can have the tracking device there with the vehicle and geofencing of the area marking of the importance points and routers routes so been monitoring with the rfid tags you can do that also handheld terminals for the drivers cctv cameras for the at secondary and final dumping sites cloud-based it platform and central monitoring station to be implemented there so what is the impact now just impact is live performance of the management of employees work of each employees is measured improved productivity per employee garbage pickup schedule is optimized state of solid state waste 
in the city is tracked. Activities of sanitation department is coordinated. So if we integrate those things, the solutions which we have defined. This is this has been taken up from the East Delhi and others where they, these things have been done already. So I'm we are just uh, discussing what these things at Chandigarh also that how we can integrate those things with our uh, this waste collection people and how we can integrate those things to to get our city more and more smarter in that way. So these are the impact which we will find out after implementing all these things. And then the safety also is one of the uh, important. Uh, uh, as criteria here where we can just you can have the GPS enabled monitoring CCTV surveillance or monitoring system uh, uh, place uh, in the whole city and the online city awareness and educations where uh, this the everybody should be aware about this that these, these are things have been integrated here and uh, and the panic button should be some something else to be place somewhere as or the helpline or SOS mobile should be some app has been created by the Chandigarh police also that you can uh, use that app for uh, buzzing out or sending the information to the police. So those things should be there for uh, the safety of the citizen of the Chandigarh uh, that has been done here. Just see the uh, video analysis enabled integrated command and control center. Uh, which is somewhere else in every city they are doing and online database of the institutes is also there and the case management uh, advanced IT solutions. So training to the uh, training and capacity uh, to the to the persons who are related to these so that they, that can be that can be managed managed easily and the, the citizen uh, sh uh, should feel safe that these things have been integrated here in the Chandigarh and the Chandigarh city is much more safer and uh, as and much more smarter in that case. So the other thing is the energy. Yes, we can save the energy by uh, uh, where we have discussed in the IoT also smart street lights, smart energy meters and the uh, the solar uh, in, uh, panel can be installed where we can save much more energy and we have <coughs> just seen here that in every uh, uh, government buildings of the chandigarh institutions have been put up the solar uh, panels and uh, that has been energy has been generated from that and we are saving a lot of lot of energy and smart some smart uh, street lights have been installed uh, in our campus also we have installed the smart uh, street uh, cameras uh, smart street lights where we are controlling those street lights through some app or through the command control where you can just define it uh, you can create in a policy where uh, in that policy particularly you can define the timings that at peak time the energy is 80 percent to 100 percent and you can redu reduce the energy consumption uh, when there is a much less density and the time is approximately where uh, it's 12 p.m. you can reduce that energy and so on you can create certain policies and at 6 p.m. in the morning it will automatically switch off so you can control these street lights and there's no dependency of the manpower and the thing is you can control and you can save much more energy in that case so uh, here what uh, some sensors are to be used and uh, smart uh, energy meters are to be used where which can, with, with the sensors we, which can find out the leakages and we can find out the how much consumption is there and if you have an app if you create an app with the smart meters you can find out easily that how much consumption of your electricity of your own house uh, for the this month or for the next month so you can uh, smartly you can know your water bills electricity bills by implementing those things through smart city products so in the healthcare also yes there is a smart health card should be there and electronic health record should be there with the uh, with the combo card or some electronic card should be there which can take care of each and everything of your record in the health or in the uh, medical hospitals where these things are to be integrated with those hospitals so that uh, the health portal telemedicines <coughs> analyze can be done online and wherever the patient can move around from one city to another so that can be that data can be enabled and the doctor can uh, immediately take some remedial actions for the patient if the online data or the if the uh, health uh, the the 
material is available the things are available for particular patient that uh, you can you can do many things as you can diagnose immediately for that particular patient if the patient history is there with that particular record of the uh, on, that is available on the online if somebody will say i am from this city and my data is available with this particular hospital so they can easily find out the data online or some card system or something else or some some app should be there that doctor should uh, be aware about this thing that he is from chandigarh this is a patient and this is a, a history of that particular patient so these things are to be integrated for smartness of the city where the data is to be maintained and he can go anywhere else the whole data is to be on the cloud system so that uh, very efficiently use that data for the doctors to find out or diagnose immediately for the patients in the education system yes many things has to be the online uh, the smart uh, classrooms biometric attendance the uh, iot based classroom systems online uh, test online analyze student performance management system teacher performance management and many things to be integrated with the uh, uh, education system so now <clears throat> i've seen that in chandigarh many schools have been integrated many things the you can find out uh, many schools have been started applications online application on mobile phones where they will get the homework they will get the attendance of the students they will get the students uh, fee how much fees is pending how much things have been pending there and the uh, tracking of the bus of their school children where like, exactly the bus location is so many things have been in integrated as for the uh, Uh, education things have been concerned so you can monitor you can uh, online reports are there you don't have to go to school uh, if you want to interact with the teacher and uh, you don't have to go personally to meet the teacher you can just send an online request or send in send a messages message to the teachers of your ward that this is i, I want to interact with this the teacher will definitely reply to your so these things have been integrated implemented in many of the schools in the chandigarh so that is the smartness of the in the in the education that these things have already been happened uh, in many of the cities in the transport yes i have uh, covered up many things that uh, bicycle sharing system should be there smart traffic lights then uh, some combo card or single fare card integrated transit hub should be there online services should be there and uh, you can easily find out at what time the at this stop the bus should come and at what time i will uh, in the, my bus will be there in, uh, uh, in the next stop from source to the destination so some something is should be implemented or integrated in these cities where dynamic pooling uh, of the cars electric vehicles where the charging station should be Uh, there so that uh, we can also uh, uh, can have this uh, non polluted areas where we can define those electric vehicles where the pollutions can be less and uh, surveillance system where that can be monitored through gps uh, tracking of the vehicles so these uh, then the itus intelligent transport units can be placed on the uh, public transport system where the utilities such kind of utilities there that every customer or every uh, citizen of the city can be aware about the the whole uh, 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 system of the uh, transportation that at what time this bus will come at what time we will reach there so these things if are there then more maximum utilization of the private uh, or the public buses can be utilized so government buses can be much more utilized if these things can happen so uh, in the pc punjab engineering college chandigarh we have created a smart city innovation center which is a smart city live lab dam developed uh, where the it's a innovation center where we are training the students uh, of our uh, btec students uh, who are aware about what exactly there is in the smart city and what we are doing uh, in the smart city innovation center where the few of the things have been integrated and they have been uh, basically get trained for creating the IP apis uh, for a single platforms say for example uh, they have done something else in the transport they have created some or they have done something else uh, some collecting a data from some sensors and that sensor can be uh, they can collect the data and Uh, they can just uh, write down a api that api has been integrated on a single platform which can show you that this sensor has been 
there and we are collecting the data we are monitoring the data and this can be happened so the students can be aware about this smart city they are uh, basically have having the awareness knowledge about the smart city uh, of the uh, uh, what we can do what we can more things can be uh, integrated and more things can be ended up with the smart city so let me demonstrate this smart city uh, innovation center of punjab engineering college chandigarh where we will just show you that how this it looks like so i have already switched on uh, this uh, only uh, we have to just use username and password and uh, i have uh, for saving the time i have switched on everything here this is a platform just see it's a cisco platform it is written cdp so it's a development platform from the cisco where you can just see the dashboard and uh, uh in the dashboard you just see there is a uh, sensor environmental sensor which shows you something as some temperature is there it's placed somewhere else in the center of the city and just see the humidity is 71.12 that particular location the sensor has been placed and show gives you the data online and <clears throat> what is the pm level uh, of that particular location this is a map of the chandigarh where we have placed the sensor and uh what is the car carbon dioxide and if just at the back end i'll just see if it is green that it's okay now this is this shows you some half red that means nitrogen dioxide in this area is uh, a little bit on the higher side and, uh, and this will give you some alert and other parameters are sulfur dioxide then ozone so this is this shows you some little bit of high high level and a uh, some danger area is defined here if it is green then that is means we are safe here so, so some someone some pollution is there you can say this is the most polluted area in sector 17 where we have put up this sensor and that has been integrated with this so uh, like this noise level is just see the noise level is a little bit is okay so this is a sensor which since each and everything, this is live data which we are showing you uh, of sector 17, where we have put up this sensor. Now, uh, going into the details, this is uh, Chandigarh, where we are showing you the Chandigarh. Uh, this is uh, main platform where we have only taken, taken up the data of the Chandigarh. And this is, we have shown you the environment uh, where it shows some humidity level is 71.2 pm level is this so it shows you some green and some red indications like nitrogen is 63.33 sulfur dioxide is 54.59 so and so on ozone is 81 so some danger zone is there which has been defined here now if we will go to the next one is the smart seat lights these street lights have been placed here in the PEC, Punjab Engineering College Chandigarh, right? So just find out this is PEC. There are seven street lights. It's there. So these street lights can be either you can switch on and off from the this platform. So this is a dashboard where you can have the full control of the street lights. Now this is on. You can switch on as you can switch off also, and you can also uh, switch off everything from here. You can switch on, and also you can create the policies. Now if you just see, there is a some policies have been created here. At what time it will switch on, and what time it will switch off. So the street light can be monitored here. So can we switch on? And if you see. Okay, now just, just see, two has been switched on. Now, these are the other thing, other have been switched off. So, you can monitor those things, you switch on and off through online platform. The person can sit here, he can control each and everything. This is just the example how we can control the street lights. Here. The third thing is we have integrated is the transport. That is the Chandigarh transport undertaking, CTU buses we have taken up. Now, just see. These are the CTU buses and 
which has shown you some buses are uh, red and some are green the red means the bus is standing somewhere else on the bus stop so there is no speed and this what we are collecting data here is the speed of the bus as well as the number of the bus this is the live data which is available right now so just see whenever i click on the red bus the bus number is this and the current current speed is 0 km but whenever on the highways i'll just take up this example okay the bus speed is 28 km and the bus number is this if i'll go further towards delhi or towards punjab see 75 km and the bus number is this so we can easily find out track out the location of the bus and you will just find out after few seconds after a few seconds the movement of the bus will change this is live data and this is a real data which is there and we are asking our students to work on this data and try to find out at what time or create an application this is live data collect this this data and just try to create an application where you can the person or the uh, citizen can find out at what 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 time i will reach at this location so or at what time the bus will back to this location so this is one of the uh, area where we have given the work to the students they are working on it they are collecting the data and they are trying to uh, do some something else for that so you can find out the bus speed as well as many things can be done for with that you can easily find out track out the timings of the bus here at what time the bus will move from this location at what time it reaches that location so this is the real uh, monitoring data where the buses can be easily monitored from this dashboard then we have a waste management yeah here we have just seen in the whole <laughs> chandigarh every set sector a bins have been provided just see a bins have been provided in every sector and you can just find out when you click on any bin it will tell you the how much bin is filled it is 21.5% here and 78.5% is the available so bins have been in the morning they have empty every bin and they have collected the garbage and now we are finding out where exactly the bins have been uh, totally filled or how much uh, is uh, the space is available with them so if there is a filled bin you can find you can monitoring from this system from this platform you can just inform the person from that particular area that these bins have been filled up and you can collect the data so you can save many much more time and you can oh, there is no manpower is required in that in, in this dash, dashboard and the other thing is you can also integrate those things with the mobile app, apps so you don't have to ring up any any person if a sensor along with some coding has to be done if is there is a filled capacity is 80 percent so it, it can automatically send the message to the person who is a, who is the in charge of that particular area that this bin has been filled up you ask somebody else to collect that particular bin so you can uh, control those things and you can manage those things so this is the smartness of our city platform uh, uh, or, or or this platform where you can uh, manage many things like city transport smart lights environment then bins also and that can be controlled so this is a live data which i am showing you that these bins what is the now just see this is a little bit red color has been shown i have clicked here it's 40 percent filled and 59 percent is the empty so the color will automatically change if it is reaches up to 50 percent it is red and some sometimes it's some other color will uh, define that sense here you will see 50 percent is filled and 49 is the uh, uh unfilled bins so this is the data from where i i just shown you this three bins and this is the whole chandigarh now in the whole chandigarh where the bins have been provided and you are just knowing that how much 
data is available and how much bins are there number of bins and you can find out what is the present uh, uh, scenario of your chandigarh and how much uh, data has been collected from this place so i have shown you environment smart lights transport waste management and uh, also we have integrated the water management where you just find out the tubel uh, of no no this is a municipal corporation chandigarh this this data is this is these things have been integrated by the mc chandigarh it's see central government has given the funds to the chandigarh administration or to the some some of the cities right to smart their cities so chandigarh has also that is in the plan of smart city network so they have integrated they have done something else which has been but public is not aware about these things that that has been some something has been integrated now what we have done we have done a, we have done a platform it's a driving seat where we integrated each and everything transportation waste management water lights environment and other things also we can integrate so this is a platform where one person only one person can sit and monitor those things and can tell anybody else to that particular uh, uh, this uh, of the particular area or in the uh, those persons that this is a problem or this is the thing which is there right now so monitoring is there and this is a smart thing where in the this platform you can monitor each and everything earlier this these things were not there so this is a basically the smart city innovation center where you can innovate many things right so we integrate many things we are uh, giving the projects to the students in our institute that you had you can do certain projects on these these are the live data and this live data is not ours data this is a municipal corporation chandigarh who has done all that and these the ipas of that particular data has been uh, inter uh, connected to our platform so we are showing this thing that is a real data of chandigarh municipal corporation chandigarh who has done all uh, all that so just find out the uh, data of the borewell details here in chandigarh there is a tubewell in each and every sector right yeah, and you can find out that how much water is available that it shows one day one per day so how much water is there and if the water is not there you can easily send somebody else the water is the level is low you can send or send the uh, some indications to the person of the connected area that you can just take precautions of taking care of that you can also uh, if we can put up some sensors you can find out the leakages of the water also you can find out where is the usability maximum use, use of the water in which area and where is the less usability of the water in which area you can find out with this system so this system will tell you each and everything the usability the leakage and the even the you can create an app i told you the smart meters can be we can install in smart smart meters in each and every house of chandigarh then you can find out the usability of your own right so this is the things which have been integrated in the smart city uh, where these things uh, we have integrated now uh, the other things is the cleanliness but this has been now uh, not there earlier the cleanliness was there that which road have been cleaned inside the sector was there also there in the data but now the company which was earlier doing th that thing has been turned out so we are not able to show that data otherwise we are showing that data also that which sit in which sector the cleaning has been done you can find out which road has been done and which road has not been done the cleanliness has not been not to be done so but now this data is not available with us but we can integrate those things even the attendance system the online things we can create many things also so this is uh uh the smart city innovation center we have integrated uh, which we have shown you uh, this environment the lights the transports waste management and water management which is available with the uh, with our platform and uh, which has been uh, we are showing you the live data where uh, these things uh, you can do many things else with that 
now switching over to the presentation i have shown you this uh, innovation center what we have integrated or what we have implemented so far at our institute and uh, uh, how what we are doing with that particular things what we are monitoring those things even the i have not uh, touched the area that uh, uh, the wi smart wi-fi campus is there in our campus where we can find out how many users are in there and what they are using how many students are there using whatsapp how many students are using youtube that is also there that is the smartness of the wireless controller based wireless uh, which we can easily find out that how many students are really working on the education line or uh, or some other areas they are touching so that can be find out the other thing is the smartness of the cctv cameras which have been integrated and these cameras where you can find out that a motion based detection system sensor has been if you can uh, add it up with the camera then the camera will not be active all the time so it will save a lot of memory and recording. Whenever there is a movement, it will automatically switch on and it can uh, do recording. So this is one of the application of the IoT where a sensor can be uh, used in with the cameras and the camera will work only when there is a movement detection. So movement detection is, if there is there a movement detection, it can record those things and it can uh, save those things at the back end, can save a lot, lot of much of time and memory also. So this is also, uh, this is one of the uh, smart parking is also one of the project where the sensors have been placed. You can just, uh, uh, in sector 17, we have no, we know that smart parking system has been integrated, but the APIs have not been connected with our smart city innovation center. We are trying to get and interconnect with those things with the smart city innovation center. If those things can be integrated, we can easily find out how much parking lots are available in sector, in which sector the lots are uh, parking space is available with that. So with internet and your platform, that is IoT, you can find out many things, which we have already discussed, smart lightning. And uh, this is all about this, uh, uh, the IoT based uh, thing. Now uh, we will today uh, demonstrate you the IoT hardware, which is a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi 3 is <coughs> basically the hardware where we can demonstrate you uh, some of the uh, one of the sensor. In fact, we you can add, we can uh, do many uh, demonstration, but uh, we will show you only one sensor, which is a temperature humidity sensor, which <coughs> which will be <coughs> sense the temperature of a particular room and uh, the humidity and which can be integrated with the cloud so that you can find out from anywhere else the what is the temperature of your room and what is the humidity of your room. So <clears throat> before uh, going into the drill, let me uh, <clears throat> explain uh, about the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry is the name, uh, basically it's a fruit name, Raspberry, and Pi is a Python. So it's a combination of Raspberry and Pi is a Raspberry Pi where um, it is it, i can say it's a very a single board computer a very small computer very small right so when we are uh, when somebody will ask me what is the difference between a arduino processor and a raspberry so i can only say arduino is a it's a microcontroller and a raspberry is in a mini computer so that is a difference so Ever since the uh, launch of this uh, Raspberry Pi from 2012, we have several versions of it. Now we are working on Raspberry uh, Pi B. And uh, this is the cheapest microprocessor unit, especially built for the learners and makers. And we can easily learn uh, how the software and hardware work together without uh, being worrying about damage and cost. Why uh, we specifically mentioned it? Because the cost, cost is very less of the sensors. Whenever you use the sensor and whenever uh, something gets wrong with the connectivity, if you uh, connect ground with the VCC or VCC with the ground, that will damage your sensor. So the cost uh, of the sensor uh, is not much more high. So um, <coughs> nothing to worry about that. Uh, but yes, 
uh, you can learn many things. You can aware about this thing. The connection is very important, positive, negative, and each and everything. So uh, in the Raspberry Pi platform, you can find out there are 40 pin pins. That is general uh, pins are there, uh, which uh, is very important to learn. Uh, where is exactly the VCC is 3.5 volt? Where it is 5 volt? Where it is 12 volt? So the pin configuration is very important thing. While connecting those things, you have to know each and every point where you can connect your sensors. We can easily learn uh, those things uh, and that the cost of this uh, uh, Pi allows new uh, 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 learn most of, of it. And also Raspberry Pi has a huge community and plenty of online resources which are available uh, online and you can do many things else with this Raspberry Pi. What we have done so far at our campus with the uh, this mini computer, uh, we have done a smart uh, display system where which gives you in the information uh, which is connected through the network. So you don't have to go directly to the uh, display system and put up the uh, uh, pen drives or you can install. Uh, add on those things. This can be smartly you can add up from the central location system that can display each and everything. For example, just you are going to the airport and you can find out how many flights have been delayed and how many flights are on time. That kind of a display has been pl placed in your uh, departments or in the centers where you can just find uh, display your what uh, the information, uh, the information of your departments. So you don't have to waste any paper every day that what at what time the class is. You can just uh, send the information and that will be displayed on the network. So this is the beauty of that particular uh, this IoT through IoT. You can use this mini computer and do many things else. So this is the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B where you can just find out many things are there. Four USB ports, one LAN port, wireless is there. then. Uh, HDMI port is there. Uh, then, yeah, HDMI port is there. 40 pin, which I told you, the 40 pin uh, pins are there. Where you can just find out, yes, uh, where is 3.5 5 volts. So you just have to remember the 40 pin configurations. Then the Broadcom, uh, this is a quad core processor which is available with this Raspberry Pi 3 model, which is 1.2 gigahertz of 1 GB RAM. The onboard. Bluetooth 4.1 and Wi-Fi facility is there. Then the SD card is there where the operating system is available. So operating system, which I discussed uh, in my previous uh, lecture, that Raspbian is the operating system, which is uh, the most important operating system. is an open source freeware uh, where you can do many things else with that particular. Then the display and the USB uh, power input is there where you can just have, just see 2.5 amps is required for the for uh, switching on this uh, mini computer. Then there's a HDMI video output, which is the beauty of that particular video output. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, HDMI uh, where uh, you can connect to any anything else right like uh, lcd projector you can connect you can connect lcds you can connect to your machines computers so this is yeah we are focusing on that just see that 40 pins and these are few 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 connections have been there there are four u uh, usbs uh, ports one lan port and one one thing is there the camera is also there and this is uh, a heat sink this one yeah this is a heat sink where the, your processor gets cooled so it, it it protects from heating the processor right so this is a mini computer you can do many things else with this raspberry pi the cost of this is very less and you can just find out then now just see this is the lcd screen Something is uh, going uh, from this screen. Something is we are displaying something else. We'll show you that, right? So you can connect uh, the LCD with this uh, Raspberry Pi, and the, you can add keyboard, mouse, pen drives, and HDMI things. 
now uh, we'll not uh, discuss about this uh, what is the difference between raspberry pi and arduino you can just google out what exactly the difference is i just want to say one thing only that this is a mini computer and that is a microcontroller so uh, raspberry pi can run on a open platform that is linux i told you the linux is a open platform uh, it's a uh, distribution where you can get a different flavors so here is a raspberry in which we are using that so the configuration is uh, uh, i told you this is 64 bit and uh, 1 gb ram wifi 802.11 any is available uh, so uh, maximum bandwidth you are getting with this raspberry uh, pi and uh, i i discussed about zigbee and wifi and with the um, maximum number of uh, how much bandwidth is there with a b g i n n so the bluetooth also uh, here bluetooth is 4.1 so you just uh, know that bluetooth 4.1 will get a maximum speed of transfer speed right and uh, the range is also more in that case four usbs ethernet is there so gpio 40 pins are available with that where you can which we usually call general purpose input output gpio so these input output pins can be used to drive leds switches sensors many things you can connect hdmi sd card is there audio video uh, uh, is there audio jack is there in fact uh, there is a uh, uh, you can uh, play the games also with, with some uh, 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 this uh, audio jack and uh, composite video. So and then display interfaces they enable us to interface display. Then camera is there, graphics port is there, which I have already told you that. Uh, so already this things have been covered up. Then how to set up all these things? Uh, this is uh, SD card is there. Then you just download the operating system on the SD card. Then this operating system is available uh, free of cost. Download it. There are many sets which are available on the Google also. I will not share those things. It's very simple to uh, uh, download and the operating system run on this platform. You can. It, it's very easy, right? Uh, this is just uh, to let you how it can fit on the heat sink on the processor. It's very simple. You can just add on this on the uh, some. Something, some glue is there. You can just uh, uh, add on to that. Uh, so, uh, setting up this uh, Raspberry Pi starter kit uh, includes preloaded SD card, where the operating system is also there. Just you have to add on the SD card, and you can uh, switch on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Then it will automatically. Uh, uh, switch on and we'll show you the platform also of Raspbian. Shutting down the command is similar to the Linux command, sudo shutdown minus h now. So sudo is a super user. You can just as a super user, you can type shutdown minus h now is the command where you can uh, shut down each and everything which is on, right? So for configuring the Raspberry Pi, just like uh, configuring your computer, it's recipe, uh, recipe slash uh, uh, dash config is the command where you can configure your uh, this uh, recipe, uh, recipe Pi. And also to open the configuration tools, uh, run the command like sudo is a super user. And uh, you can just type recipe uh, dash config. Like, uh, if you want to know your IP address, you can use the command uh, IP config. Or in Linux, you use IF config. You can find out your IP address. Similarly, you can configure those things. Same thing here. A recipe config is there. You can set many things while using. This is the recipe config where you can expand file system. You can change your password. Uh, you can enable uh, this booting to the uh, choose whether to boot from the desktop or from some other things. Uh, then you can uh, enable cameras also. You can set up the clock also. Advanced options are also available. What my suggestion is not to uh, play with this configuration files. These are uh, automatically set by the default company setup, or uh, uh, nothing is to be done with that. Only you have to just set up the clock that will set up with your. Uh, this what is exactly the time available with that particular thing. So 
going into the details i'm not uh, going uh, further into more and more into this raspberry configurations <coughs> There are menu options available where you can set up the passwords and uh, interfacing options are also there. You can, whatever you want to interface, enable or disable the cameras and other things with that particular thing. So uh, DTH1 uh, is the sensor, uh, which is a humidity sensor on the Raspberry Pi, which is connected to DTH1. Uh, and uh, this is just uh, the, uh, pictorial view that how the sensor has been connected to the Raspberry Pi and one LCD screen is there which will show you the uh, exact temperature and so how to set up this DTH1 humidity sensor here the DTH1 temperature and humidity sensor is the nice module that provides digital temperature and humidity it really easy to set up and only requires one wire for the data signal only one uh, wire is required for data these sensors are popular for use in remote weather stations, soil monitors, and home automation systems. Programming DTH11 and connecting it to the Raspberry Pi is a pretty simple, right? DTH11 has a surface mounting NTC thermos, thermistors and a resistive humidity sensors. So this is basically, a, uh, you can connect this sensor with the Raspberry Pi and just write a code on a Python where you can find out the exactly what is the room temperature and humidity of your room, room is. So this is the uh, uh, DTH1, DTH11 uh, sensor where two kinds of sensors are available, uh, three legs where a signal VCC ground is there. The other is having the four legs where signal VCC uh, ground is there and the fourth one is not used. So uh, mostly we we are using here is three legs uh, DTH11 sensor, uh, which is a three pin mounted modules. And uh, this can be, this can be used here and uh, we'll just, uh, show you that this sensor has been connected here with the Raspberry Pi and just see uh, yeah this is a sensor where you just find out a uh, this is on and uh, this is a sensor so this is a three pin sensor where the one is VCC the other one is the ground the third one is the data from where it collects the data and this is connected to the 40 pin general uh, port uh, uh, input output pins so this is a three pin uh, connection uh, where you can use the breadboard also we are there we are we are not using any breadboard here we are connect directly connected to this so just find out pin number two pin number six and pin number seven is connected so pin number two six and seven which is a three pins which has been used for the vcc ground and the data so how to write and run a python program on this it's a very useful uh, basically programming language uh, uh, and very easy to read uh, this uh, the python program language actually started with the scripting language for linux python programs are similar to shell script uh, and the file contains a series of commands that computers execute for the top to the bottom so this is just uh, uh, the comparison that what is written in c a hello world in the right side we are showing here the code here we are showing that this is how we can write and see the hello world right so just see in the left portion it's a python code so it's very simple print hello world then the semicolon with the curly some brackets right so that is very simple to write the python code uh, so this is just the comparison how we compare this C language with this Python and uh, you can write down many things have been Not there which is written in C. So what we can do we can uh, we can have a Python program uh, You can use Python program for web applications set desktop, desktop applications special GUIs, small database and other games you can create those things
So Python 2 or Python 3 can come pre-installed with Raspberry Pi. So you can just have this Python. Uh, it simply run on one of these commands at the command prompt. You write sudo app get install Python 3 or install Python. So apt dash get install Python 3, it will install Python 3 or you can install Python 3. So Python 2 and Python 3, the important difference between this is uh, various operators, various functions, error handlings are there with the Python 3. So to access the Python, you can enter Python commands, just like the command enter Python or Python 3, depending upon the versions. Now, uh, to running the Python program, you just uh, write, uh, now I will hand over this uh, the coding part to my colleague, Prof Simran, he will just guide you, tell you uh, that what we have done so far with the Python code and we can how we can fetch the data from the Raspberry Pi. Good Pardon? No, 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 no. We'll finish up it here. We'll continue. Can yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So when we had, <coughs> we have already displayed that how easy it is to uh, write a Python code. Now, if, uh, if when we are coding in Python, if we have to write a simple script of how to uh, print hello world in Python, we can simply write sudo nano hello world dot py. This will simply create a file by the name of hello world. And you can simply enter this code into nano and write uh, print hello world and then by pr pressing control x we can save the file once the file is saved all python program files will need to be saved in a dot py extension you can write the program in any text editor such as notepad or notepad plus plus just to be sure to save the file with a dot py extension all python files that are executable should be saved in a dot py extension when you uh, when you want to execute this file you simply write python whatever version you're using if you're using python 2 we'll be using python 2 and the name of the file or we'll be writing in the terminal we'll be writing python 3 uh, the name of the file if you're using python 3 we'll write python 3 hello world.py and it will execute the code that we have written next when we have to code the uh, D dst 11 sensor we have already uh, we've already been told by batisar that the dst 11 sensor is connected to the raspberry pi only connecting the sensor to the Raspberry Pi will not uh, give us the reading. For the reading uh, of the temperature and the humidity, we have to write a simple code in Python that executes uh, and gives us the uh, temperature and humidity of this room in, uh, in uh, degrees Celsius and percentage. So for uh, writing this code, uh, we need a library by the name of Adafruit. That's a simple library uh, openly available. It's an open source library available on uh, GitHub. We can simply install that library into Python. The uh, library is by the name of uh, Adafruit DST 11 library. The path is given in the green text that you can see the path is given here. We can simply write git clone the path of the library uh, HTTPS github.com Adafruit Adafruit underscore Python underscore DST dot git. Once this uh, library is installed, we just have to place the library in the directory of Python by simply writing cd adafruit underscore python underscore dht sudo app get installed build essential python dash dev this is a simple code that is given all uh, if, you, if you google it out on uh, google or anything you can simply find this code that how to install this library on uh, the python or the raspberry pi once this uh, code is written we can simply write this small python script to get the result in uh, of the temperature and humidity now I'll be explaining this code to you. This Python program will output the temperature and humidity readings in, into a SSH terminal, whatever terminal you are using on. When we uh, open the terminal on Raspberry Pi, we simply create this uh, simple code by writing uh, import sys is the first line. This imports basic system files uh, of Python that are required to uh, run the sensor on the GPIO pins. We simply import the system files by writing import sys then the library that we have installed is adafruit underscore dht we simply write import adafruit underscore dht this installs uh, this imports all the components of the library into our code and while true 
while true is a simple programming structure where uh, uh, where uh, until the the sensor is connected to the raspberry pi it will keep executing this code so uh, in the next line humidity and temperature are two variables that are initialized by this simple function adafruit underscore dht dot read underscore retry and in brackets we have 11 comma 4 so what does this 11 comma 4 mean two variables that have to be initialized humidity and temperature 11 comma 4 tells us that the 11th sensor is being used we are using the dht 11 sensor there are many more variants of this sensor dht 11 dht 22 dht 33 we just uh, simply tell the code that the dht 11 sensor is being used and fourth the number four represents that we are using the fourth gpio pin the number four uh, on the on the python uh, on the on the raspberry pi we're using the fourth gpio general purpose input output pin to detect the humidity and temperature as we already know there are three pins on the dst 11 sensor one is vcc one is ground and one is the data uh, data pin <coughs> so the vcc is used to initiate the circuit with the with the raspberry pi the ground is used to complete the circuit with the raspberry pi and the data pin is used to fetch the values of the humidity and temperature the data pin is connected to the fourth pin of the uh, fourth gpio pin of the raspberry pi that is mentioned here in the code the last line that you can see is simply used to print the humidity and temperature in a particular format that we have received from the from the uh, from the function so for printing the value we can simply write print temperature zero represents the first variable as you all know array uh, if we uh, if we all know about arrays arrays already always stored the variables on index starting from index zero one and then uh, carry on so zero represents the first variable and in the next line 0 0.1 f represents that we're using a float value up to one decimal place c c represents the celsius symbol humidity is again a uh, humidity is represented as one colon 0 0.1 f one again the second variable is being represented as one and the colon represents 0 0.1 f 0 0.1 f says it's a float value up to one decimal place and then a followed by a percentage the dot format uh, function only represents that which uh, which variables are we using for the format the dot format structure it contains temperature and humidity as soon as we execute this code, we can have an output on our display. What is the temperature and humidity of our uh, room currently? So if we want to have a look on the output. Yes. So when I simply execute this code, Python 3 uh, temperature underscore humidity dot py, as soon as I press enter, the connection is connected to the cloud where we are uh, storing these values and you can easily see the temperature and humidity of this room are being returned. As soon as I hold this sensor in my hand, you can see the temperature and humidity will start changing in the values. So it, it, this is the sensor that basically senses the temperature and humidity of the current location and it returns us the value in, the, in, a, in a simple Python code. We can simply note down the values and even store these values in a cloud or uh, some web application. So this is the data which the data we are collecting from a room that how much temperature is there. <coughs> And what is the humidity? So we can easily find out the temperature of the room and the humidity of the room. And now the data is there. We have collected the data. We have collected the data somewhere else. Either you can put it on somewhere else in the location, uh, on the space, or in the cloud, or in your machine. And that data can be utilized further for monitoring on the app. Either you write down an app, or you write down a web application, where from web application you can just uh, fetch particular data to the web portal and you can wherever you go you can just monitor your uh, the room temperature 
from anywhere else in the location. So uh, now switching over to the screen, just we are just showing you that uh, this is uh, the data. This is the real time data of this uh, where the it will show you the humidity as well as the temperature uh, of the room, this room. And whenever we just when I touch up this sensor, it will so show, show you some of the variations, right? So uh, the humidity as well as the temperature uh, that will uh, show you some variation in that, right? So this is the example uh, based on the IoT that uh, you use the this mini computer as a Raspberry Pi. Write down a Python code, collect out the data, and this data can be used uh, on the web interface. Then you can monitor. For example, I'm just taking up the example of your uh, our uh, data center or what we can say the uh, the important things where we are storing that data center. You are collecting the data. You that is very crucial data, and you want to monitor your data center so that one. Main important thing is that the temperature is a very important thing where you just try to find out what exactly you have set up the temperature. So what you can do is what we have done so far, we have write down a code and we can take up the out output as a temperature and the humidity. And in the Smart City Innovation Center, we have shown you that other things have been integrated with this sensor, the environmental things that what is the uh, nitrogen, <coughs> carbon dioxide, ozone layer. What other things are there? But well, this is a very small uh, sensor where we are showing you that this humidity and temperature, these are the two important things for the data center. So this data center where we can write down the Python code that we can add up the buzzer or we can add up some email system or SMS in the Python code that if the temperature goes up from 25 degree or from 24 degree you can set then it will send you the email that your room temperature is now 25 degree then you can take appropriate action wherever you are so there is no manpower is required through iot you can monitor many things this is one of the live example which we have done so far that you can have the check of your data center, the humidity and temperature you can monitor online. And this can be also checked up from your mobile phones that uh, you know the uh, see parameters and just uh, click on your mobile and just find out the uh, room temperature of your data centers. So this is just we have give you the live example that how we can set up so far these things uh, with the Raspberry Pi, uh, how we can integrate those things uh, through the Raspberry Pi. So the IoT plays a very important role where which uh, it helps out in, uh, in many areas. It We have touches many areas in the smart cities where we have shown you many things related to transport, water, water management, waste management, environmental, smart lights, and this Raspberry Pi we have touched so far. So uh, I'm, I'm finishing up here. Uh, about this, uh, the live demonstration, and uh, any questions related to Raspberry Pi and the smart city, uh, I will be happy to answer. Please. Hello, sir. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, please. Actually, in Raspberry Pi, can we connect an analog sensor with Raspberry Pi directly? Or do yes. we need ABC before Raspberry Pi to connect with Raspberry Pi? No, you can connect analog as well as digital uh, digital sensors to the Raspberry Pi directly also. Or you can okay. So you have shown that it, it is 40 pin, general purpose 40 pin, uh, 40 pins are available there. Yes. But, uh, there is no ABC convert, uh, ABC compatible pins. It wasn't shown there. It's there inside the system itself. It's there inside the system itself. So you can just use it directly with that. And and the next one is can we take the supply directly from the 
module for uh, directly uh, can we take supply directly from this module if we want to connect sensor or actuator directly directly is it possible to take the supply directly from raspberry pi that is up to 5 volt you can connect okay and if if the current consumption is more then how much how much current it required like if you want to connect the actuator like motors is is it possible to connect motors directly then it will be a separate supply yes, the sensor will require a separate supply then only the data pin can be Okay. Okay. Separate okay. for the see the separate supply can be used and the data pin can be utilized with this Raspberry uh, Pi. So you can use that also. Okay, sir. Sir, this this PPT is very innovative and very helpful. Can we get this PPT through uh, and uh, can you uh, can you upload this PPT in an I uh, and triple T R app Chandigarh app? Can you upload this one PPT? Yeah, surely we will give it, give this PPT to uh, the organizing okay. committee and. Uh, okay. And I'm 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 definitely give my PPT to that. Because this this one is very. Apart from that, sir, the in the previous in the previous PPT, you have shown us the module of smart city. Yeah. And in that in that module, you have uh, you mentioned different different application that uh, that IOTs have. Like, but can you give us more detail about SOS, SOS and the cleanliness? How we can ampl implement SOS? Because because in this case in IITs you need sensors so many sensors and actuator so how we can we can send SOS signal by using IIT it means it must be connected with a particular person and uh, individual to individual how we can send SOS it, it's uh, it's uh, I can't imagine this scenario so can you explain this yes yes See, SOS is SOS is it's a feedback system <laughs> where uh see you can get directly directly the feedback from the citizen right so if you create an app and the app will be distributed to the your city the local people and directly you can uh, ask them to give us the feedback so that feedback can be taken out and if there is any remedy or anything is to be done directly that is the approachable thing you are directly connected to the citizen and the citizen can give you the right the exact feedback that this is the thing which has not been done so far. So this SOS services can give you the message that this is the not uh, this is not the uh, right thing you have done so far. You, the citizen of Chandigarh or any any city they want these things to be integrated with it, that thing. So these applications are there, but that has not been integrated with the SOS. But that can be very much useful while taking up the feedback of the citizen now. So that will help you improving much more uh, in integrating those things. And the inputs getting from the citizen will help you to improve yourself. So SOS services is such a service where this is a where uh, you can have the uh, area you can improve. You can get the feedback directly from the citizen and you can connect to the citizen directly. So this is SOS service. Second thing is the cleanliness. Yes, Rel yes. Related to the cleanliness, what uh, earlier uh, the administration or the city has done, the company which has taken out the project for the cleanliness of whole city, they have uh, distributed the applications to every uh, person who was cleaning that particular roads, right? Inside roads of the uh, sectors and what they are doing is after cleaning that particular uh, uh, their their work or they clean their road they are sending the information to their own bo bosses right of each and every sector there is one boss is there okay. and that boss will collect the information that these number of roads have been cleaned so far by the by my team and this boss will send the information to the administration that we have cleaned and this is the real time data he has collected and this will okay. send the compiled information that in this sector this much of roads have been cleaned and this is the now the exact uh, data what we have that this, this has been cleaned and this has not been cleaned so we can easily monitor those things that at what time this has been done and on which time this has been done and who has not been done that was also been reported online so you can find out in which sector the work is pending and the work is already done related to the cleanliness. This is a very uh, good project, but this was earlier initiative, but the company which was uh, given the task, 
they have uh, uh, taken out back this project and uh, now we are uh, working on it and if somebody will come forward and we will integrate those things also okay. i hope i give you yes sir sir uh, can i ask again one question actually you are talking about a smart city right so a smart city maybe it may be within 10 10 km premises it, it is spread within 10 10 km so is it possible to connect so many sensors so many nodes all together in a, in a single wireless sensor network uh, with with a single app who, who that through that app one person is controlling everything is it possible to do so yes it is possible i shown you the city bus system the buses are, the buses are not ply in chandigarh they are right from chandigarh to delhi to uh, uh, punjab and to haryana to himachal pradesh also so i have shown oh. that buses are there and these buses are not only in chandigarh they are also covering up the whole other states also so it is possible that you can collect those data directly it's a live data which i have shown to you that this much of a data is available with us and this data you can do many things so what we have implemented so far related to your question yes it is possible it's it's not the see uh, the uh, area which we are defining that it's only 10 km area you can cover up no it depends upon the media if the i in my last previous lecture i have shown you that what media plays in a very important role if you have a connectivity up to if you have a connectivity up to 1000 km it does not matter see you just have to put up your sensor there you can monitor from anywhere else you are on internet right so it does not matter wherever you are you monitor many things so whatever how many sensors you are putting on in which area you can collect those information get those information either in the specific location which is static or you can go anywhere else uh, you, if you are a dynamic so you collect the information that not depends upon a particular uh, area or the static locations it is flexible system so you can connect number of sensors you can connect number of you can collect number of information and you can integrate those things on a single platform also which i have shown you that five things have been integrated on a single platform so, so it, yeah, yeah it means it means at each node like uh, one arduino is connected like we are talking about arduino board so how uh, so my question is like how many arduino like if with each bus one and adreno is connected and with with each garbage garbage between one adreno is there also so how many adreno can be communicated with a single application that depends upon your network how much network can handle up right see it depends upon the backbone only if you understand the network see yes. first ever whenever you plan something else you have to first plan your backbone if your backbone is strong then a number of sensors or anything else can be added up if your backbone is a low thing it cannot bear those things then the system will fail so that depends upon the whole backbone so if you have a strong network with a strong backbone with a huge bandwidth available you can add up many things okay. thank you very sir, much sir do you want to ask sir so, uh, can we send can we send student from from atarna university for the training at your at your place where you are right now so is it possible to conduct a seminar or training for one or for two or for three days one two or three three days sir or a visit or a visit or a visit or a visit you tie up with the organizers uh, uh, so uh they can con uh, contact me we will find out a time definitely we will love to give presentations and everything we are not denying yes. anything else if time permits and if the organizers they are uh, uh, okay with the, all these things they will discuss uh, with us and we will definitely try to do those things so you better uh, my my only humble submission is uh, please request to the organizers and the or organizers uh, they are there they will try to uh, see arrange things for you and we are happy to uh, sir because, because small workshop is not sufficient two three days four days we can't learn so much so many things by three four days so we we need a good exposure i mean to, i mean to say students need good exposure we let are learning people yes yes sir let me tell so you let me tell you we have we have six weeks training program or uh, one week training program on in december at punjab engineering college chandigarh related to this raspberry pi so just google out the our website and 
there is a training program workshop is there or one uh, five day workshop uh, program is there short term course is there so okay. send send your students uh, then we will uh, accommodate those students also right yes sir thank you. thanks a lot sir thank you thank you good morning good morning sir am i audible wait, wait. Wait, wait. yeah we are from scs umb kanchipuram in tamil nadu okay to answer the previous question raspberry pi does not support analog it has only digital pins now my question is sir for example if i'm going to put a smart dustbin in each of the streets i cannot uh, buy an expensive raspberry pi and uh, then use it for uh, the dustbins would you suggest any other cheaper device sir the cheapest device as of now which i know is no dim to you but that works only using wifi so that is one doubt can you pick any very cheap devices for uh, small small iot projects and the second question is if there are so many devices in a street which mode of connectivity would you prefer would you just connecting to the telephone network using sim card and gsm always or would you prefer wifi or anything else if there are too many devices i think uh, nowadays the sim cards are very cheaply available so even in the just means also the sim cards have been some somewhere some of the sim cards have been placed and there are those who are collecting the data they have the sim cards with them so the sensors whatever the sensors i i just in my previous lecture i told that every mobile phone acts as a sensor so that's that is a sensor that is a cheaply available the person is there who is collecting the garbage right so they can collect the material they can send the information directly because they have a sim card sim card is very cheaply available and everybody is having that sim card we are not giving them any services of that so only the thing is the awareness about the people that how we can utilize those things so they can send the information to the main uh, the their leader and that leader can give the information to the main portal so that portal can collect the whole information how much things have been done and that can be monitored centrally also the team is there which are checking up that how much things have been who are the saying the right data or sending the right data or sending the wrong data so that is the one thing the other one thing is yes i i i uh, agree that the raspberry pi uh, is a little bit you can say for the projects for the practical things that is good enough but cheaply available sensors there are many but yes we are working on it but i am not aware about which sensor is much more cheaply available with uh, nowadays because we are this is a new thing which we are also doing certain projects on that so if the moment we will get something else uh, which are much more cheaply available we will definitely share with you okay uh, thank you so much sir as of now sim cards are fine sir because there are not a lot of iot devices yeah yeah in the future when everything becomes iot like when a street has uh, five smart dustbins all of the street lights are smart we uh, if we'll be for example a street will have a, be having around 200 to uh, 300 sim cards then overall if we see in a city there will be thousands and thousands of sim cards which is bad for the mobile network so thus in that perspective i asked whether is there any other a uh, better mode of communication than sim card as of now sim card is awesome so no problem but yeah. in the future yeah. yeah yeah so that's what i am asking is there any development except wifi wifi does not have long range so that's why sir that was the doubt no no that is whatever the data you have the same thing is we are using that so any further information is if anything is there definitely i will love to share with you at what are the things in the market which are cheaply available and which is the technology which is much more cheaply available for this we'll definitely try to share you uh, okay. in the next uh, workshop definitely so thank you so much we love the workshop and we are also willing to send our students for your uh, program sure. to chandigarh thank, so you thank you very much thank you very much i love to uh, guide your students also and uh, yeah, better uh, i can only say that the organizer will uh, will uh, they will try to arrange if there is any kind of a Uh, students uh, who want to attend those workshop either they arrange here or they will arrange at our institute i will love to give demonstrations and give the workshop uh, presentation for your students thank you very much thank you so much sir once again we are from scs umb kanchipuram tamil nadu thank you so much thank you any other center
Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Bhatish, for a very informative uh, session. The number of questions asked by the participants in the remote center shows that uh, how much uh, with keenness they listened to it and acquired the new information. And that is why there were so many queries. So thank you once again. And now we'll break for the tea. And after, uh, say, 15 minutes, we'll start with our next session. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you very Dr. much. For thank you, Prof. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much.
comes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. So today, after the tea break session, we will start with our last technical session of the program. That is IoT enabled manufacturing systems. Uh, in our institute, we have been trying to build up uh, some uh, system which is IoT enabled. And so we have taken a, a small step towards that. We have connected our existing flexible manufacturing system with the cloud through which we can see remotely the status of the different machines, whether they are on and off. There are still many things to be done, which we will do uh, slowly and steadily. But today we will show you uh, the case study that how it was done. It will be dealt by Mr. Jayant Gehlot, who is our ME research scholar, who has done this as part of his ME thesis work. Before that, I will discuss with you that what are the things which have made it possible to bring IoT into manufacturing. IoT manufacturing is also known by many other names, more common being uh, digital manufacturing or industry for standard. So we will discuss right from the invention of the steam engine, the different technologies that have combined and resulted in the industry for or digital manufacturing or IoT enabled manufacturing. So during this uh, uh, talk, I'll be using some uh, pictures, uh, some videos, which are, uh, which have been uh, developed by some other uh, say parties. So they have been duly acknowledged at the end of the presentation, but if uh, inadvertently, if something is missed, I'm sorry for that. Okay. So let us uh, discuss IoT in manufacturing. If we uh, look at the historical developments, there are many things which have to be looked into. The foremost is the power source. We know that without power, nothing can happen. Then we have the developments which took place in the field of electronics because that resulted in development of uh, advanced controllers, advanced sensors, miniaturized sensors, signal conditioning, as well as computer systems. So the software part we can say is also dependent upon electronics. Then the developments in uh, computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing, communication technology, which has resulted in data driven manufacturing and logic. To start the journey, so we first go to 1700. Uh, two years before that, Thomas Savory, he developed the first steam pump. It was the first commercially available successful steam powered device on which the later on versions of steam engines were developed. So taking a cue from Savory's work, Thomas Newcomen developed a steam engine in 1712, which was the first practical device to harness steam to produce mechanical work which was followed by many designs of uh, James Watt's steam engine. So all those designs were improved version of new common engine and they resulted in better fuel efficiency. The period of industrial revolution is considered to be from approximately 1760 to 1840. So which you can see it was due to the development of steam engine. So the steam powered uh, devices, they resulted in industrial revolution. Following the steam power, then came electric power. But in 1870s and in 18, early 1880s, it was a DC power which dominated the industry. 
small systems small dc systems were sold to factories around the world for industrial and mining use this was followed by development of three phase ac power system in the late 1880s which led to large scale electrification in the 1890s in the west and which also resulted in growth in the industrialization automation was there before electricity was introduced automation was being implemented using mechanisms but the electricity enabled a large scale automation so in the early 1900s up to 1920 relay logic was introduced in the industry and in the 1930s feedback controllers were introduced uh the proportional integral derivative type feedback controllers were available earlier also like a very simple example is of a feedback controller is the uh, that uh, governing mechanism which was used in steam turbines and water turbines also and even pid algorithms were also used but they were very basic so it was in 1920s that a mathematical Uh, analysis of pid was done so which resulted in uh, more use of the pid based feedback controllers so the automation was there but the word automation was not used up to 1947 in 1947 henry ford established an automation department in his industry and the word automation was coined by a person an engineer working in the ford plant his name was del harder so it was during this time that industry was rapidly adopting feedback controllers during the same time the era of computers began so there are uh, many versions available that which was the first electronic digital computer but uh, more or less eniac is considered as the first electronic digital computer so any extends for electronic numerical integrator and computer it was developed in 1945 and as you can see it was a huge machine occupying almost uh, the size of a house so during the same time in 1940s numerical control machines also arrived on the scene so these days we use computer numerical control machines so with the foundation for which was laid by numerical control machine so the first numerical control machine was developed by john parsons in 1940s as a method of producing aircraft parts or helicopter parts using an ibm 602a electromechanical calculator so this was the first calculator which was able to carry out division also earlier only addition subtraction and the multiplication was available he used this device to calculate air foil coordinates and he used this data on punched tapes to produce parts so the machines would read the punched tape data and accordingly the tooling would move and the part would be produced so parson's work led to numerous air force research projects at massachusetts institute of technology boston starting in 1949 now the in 1940s the computers that we were using the electronic computers they were more or less using vacuum tubes also and then came the era of ics it was in the in the 1950s that the uh, integrated electronic circuits into a single device it began the first known integrated integrated transistor amplifier in 1949 was made by a german physicist and engineer werner jacob followed by a british radio engineer jeffrey dummer's proposal to integrate a variety of standard electronic components in a monolithic semiconductor crystal in 1952 Harvick Johnson filed a patent for a prototype IC in 
so by the end of 1950s uh, we had quite a good technology in place which would lead to uh, the large scale automation and finally to digital manufacturing so in 1950s another thing happened that is the development in computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing in 1957 henretti who was working at general electric developed a program called pronto uh, which was acronym for program for numerical tooling operations it was the it is considered as the first commercial cnc programming system so remember in 1940s the nc came and in 1950s then finally the cnc came in 1962 Sutherland presented his PhD thesis at MIT titled Sketchpad a man machine graphical communication system so this was the first system with a graphical user interface which was also able to use a light pen to manipulate objects displayed on the cathode ray tube so these days we are very much we take the touch screen as uh, for granted so but those days it was uh, it was the first thing which resulted in a kind of a touch screen but not with hand but with a light pen the developments in computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing they continued in 1960s uh, when other developments including the first digitizer and the first production interactive graphics manufacturing system was made so like now we have scanners so common device but the digitizer came into uh, being at that time so where a drawing could be placed on a board and using a mouse like device the drawing was people were able to digitize the drawing and transfer it to the computers in the 1970s computer aided design moved from two dimensional to three dimensional and the major milestones were the work of ken versprill whose invention of nerves for his phd thesis formed the basis of modern 3d curve and surface modeling followed by the work of alan greer charles lang and ian braid they developed part and assembly description language which was basically a solid modeler for generating the 3d models so as we moved on to 1960s a number of things happened like up to 1960s uh, there was no wide area network the first wide area network was established on october 29 1969 at 10:30 pm when the message was sent from university of california los angeles to stanford research institute again within california only but it was over a few hundred miles and this project was under uh, defense arpanet that is advanced research projects agency network in fact the earlier work of internet was mostly funded by uh, us defense organizations only during this time another thing happened that the uh, logic circuits which were being used which were being implemented using relay logic and switches the programmable logic controllers they arrived on the scene so during late 1960s when the programmable logic controllers came into the industry at that time they were called programmable controllers or pcs only in the 1980s when the personal computers arrived on the scene and since programmable controllers were confined to the industry whereas personal computers became a household name so the name of the programmable controller was changed to programmable logic controllers and they became plcs electronics had developed to a large extent and electronics and electrical was being used in combination with mechanical devices and to signify the merging of the mechanical and electronics or electrical engineering disciplines A Japanese engineer Tetsuro Mori from Yaskawa Electric Company coined the term mechatronics. So that term was first of all used in 1969. Now, with the development of 
electronics, software, CAD, CAM, the computer numerical control matured. CNC machines started taking shape using digital technology as we see them today, but with, of course with more improvements. Now the transfer of data from one location to another over a large distance, it got a great boost with the fiber optics based communication. The work on fiber optics was going on, but in April 1977, General Telephone and Electronics tested and deployed the world's first live telephone, tra uh, telephone traffic through a fiber optic system running at 6 megabits per second in Long Beach, California. So now data could be transmitted by converting the electrical input signal into light ray and at the receiving end converting back the light ray into electrical signal. So it was much faster as compared to the copper wire system and the bandwidth could also be very high. 1980s saw a very big revolution when the first personal computer was launched by IBM. It was called IBM 5150 in August 1981. So earlier the computers were large, but this was a computer which could sit on a desktop and people could buy it and use them in not only in the industry, but also in the shops, in the homes. So this thing revolutionized the digital manufacturing because with this coincided the emergence of Unix workstations and the commercial CAD systems like CATIAs and other began showing up in aerospace, automotive and other industries. And the introduction of this first IBM IC, uh, PC in 81, it set the stage for the large scale adoption of computer aided design. In 1983, the first version of a very popular CAD software that is AutoCAD was released. As we see today, there are so many CAD and CAM software, but it all began in 1980s. So a very important step toward digital manufacturing happened again in 1980s with the development of distributed numerical control system, DNC. It is also called direct numerical control system. So earlier up to CNC machines, an individual machine was being controlled by a computer. After the CAD model or non-CAD model, the engineers would prepare the process plans, decide what tooling is required. And based on that, the NC code or the numerical code was written and given to an individual machine. And using that code, the machine would carry out the machining of the component. So you had to carry the numerical code, you have to feed the, that uh, G code, M code program to each and every machine on the shop floor. But now with the distributed numerical control or direct numerical control, it was possible to have a central computer on which the codes for different machines were fed and the system relayed the code to different machines. Whatever code was required on an individual machine that was given there. Now this thing not only simplified the, uh, you can say the numerical control or the CNC, but it also resulted in revolution of another thing that is called shop floor control system. Because as the manufacturing is going on, there are so many things which are required. For example, things are made only when sale or orders are received. Based on the order received, the company has to decide what material it has to procure, the raw material for the work pieces, the tooling, etc. And based on that, the work allocation, the making of process plan, all things. Right? And also, as the manufacturing is going on, collecting data that how many parts have been manufactured, how many parts are in production, 
how many parts have passed the quality uh, inspection test how many parts have failed how many parts are in packaging how many parts are lying in the store for the delivery etc etc so the whole shop floor control system also became easier with this because now individual machines could relay the data to the central computer that how many parts they have processed what is the status of the on of the current part which is being manufactured etc etc so the direct numerical control also helped in the shop floor control for example in the product data management the master production schedule scheduling called mps the material requirement planning in procuring the raw material and tooling from outside sources the quality management that is quality control in preparing the payroll of the employees in capacity requirements planning that based on the orders received based upon the <coughs> orders already in the processing does the company need more machine does the company need to hire more people or what kind of people are to be hired more designers more production engineers more technicians etc etc similarly the sales order management what is the status of the orders how many have been delivered etc etc warehouse management that is what uh, material is lying in the warehouse how much quantity is left and the machines could also directly inform the warehouse that they need this material at this time similarly inventory management that is how much material is on the machines currently under processing how much material is under packaging etc etc so all these things that is the connections started happening in a big way in the 1980s another thing happened at that time was cad cam integration so as we just discussed that once a geometrical model was made the machining has to be done now between the geometrical model and the machining there were stages of process planning that is production scheduling <coughs> planning the tooling and then writing the nc programs so this part was being done by humans although computers were being used for that but the once the geometrical model was made there was no direct link to the machining so humans were required to carry out this part now with with the advent of uh, personal computers and uh, uh, you can say uh, fast processing computers another thing became possible that right from the geometrical model of a component the nc programs could be directly produced this was possible through interface algorithms and process planning which was now being done by computerized process planning systems so if we uh, talk of these personal computers in those days uh, uh, it will be although now it may look very trivial but many systems had uh, hard disk capacities of the order of 200 megabytes uh, ram capacities of 4 megabytes or 8 megabytes was also very expensive but at, at that time that was a revolution in 1990s then internet came in a big way the communication technology with the advent of the ICs, the optical fibers, the wireless area networks, etc., it made it progressed a lot and it made networking of machines across locations, across different cities, different countries possible. This development made functions such as the remote operation of robotic manipulator arms possible. So in the nutshell, we can say that in by 1990s, the foundation of digital manufacturing was laid. So if we look at the whole thing, we discuss that the first revolution came with the advent of the steam power, right? due to which mechanization was possible. At that time, water sources were used and steam power was used for mechanization. So officially it is called the first industrial revolution, whether we talk in terms of industry four or whether we talk of in terms of the history of industry or the history of the humankind. 
but then as we saw that in 70s and 80s with large scale automation the mass production became possible assembly lines were there electricity was well in place so that is considered a second industrial revolution after that came the computers due to which automation became uh, compact automation became you can say intelligent so that period of the late 80s or 90s can be considered as the third industrial revolution and in the 90s when the internet came in a big way the machines whether it is a robots or other machines they could connect with remote servers with other machines with other management information systems through wi-fi through internet networks so that what is now is called as fourth industrial revolution or industry four so this term was coined uh, late in 2000 maybe 2009-10 by uh, in germany and i think uh, in a uh, trade fair uh, in germany in 2011 or 12 this term was then formally given a name that industry four so basically what is industry four so industry four is a name given to the current trend of automation and data exchange in manufacturing technologies now it is you can say it includes different component for example the cyber physical systems so what are the cyber physical systems that means a system which is physical so when we were talking of internet up to early 1990s it was a network of computers only slowly and steadily when other devices because other devices were also now controlled by electronics and due to which connecting them to the internet became possible so other physical devices like machines or automotives they also came into the picture so there came into being the cyber physical systems so if you uh, go through some science fiction movies like terminator series so there they use these words of cyber physical systems so a cyber physical system is basically a mechanism a machine or a car or even smart grids are also called cyber physical systems because there also you have moving parts which is connected which is control number one controlled by computer algorithms number two it is very closely uh, intertwined with internet and the users so it is not only an individual machine which is being controlled by a computer but it is also connected with the internet it can be accessed remotely it can be given commands remotely or the data from the system can be extracted remotely so the cyber physical systems are the most important thing of this then the internet of things a cyber physical system is also a thing as we said that an internet early was only a network of computers but then came the smartphones the machines the homes the automotives so it was not only in a network of computers but network of different things which is came to be known as internet of things like uh, a very simple example is that when we uh, if we park a car somewhere in a parking of a big mall and while parking the car you are talking to your companion or you are talking on the phone with somebody it is very likely that you will lock the car and go away and you will forget the bay number where you have parked the car or if you arrive at home in the evening and again your mind is busy somewhere maybe you're talking on the phone or you start talking with your family members and you may place the car keys or your uh, wallet anywhere and you may forget in the morning where did i place that thing so now with all these things it is possible to put uh, small controllers in them sensors in them sensors which can relay which have the onboard electronics for signal conditioning as well as for relaying the data through wi-fi so in the morning when you get up if you don't find these things the only thing which is always with you is your phone 
so your phone can tell you where is your car key where is your wallet where is your maybe even your belt where is your tie anything can be now connected so so many things came on the internet and let's go internet of things and there is a prediction that by i think 2020 approximately 50 billion devices in the world will be connected to the internet now with these things as the devices which are connected to internet they grow to such a large scale it what happens is that a lot of data is now coming to the internet like in the question answer session of our previous uh, session uh, there were questions that so much devices will be there so much data is coming so it is not possible now for a human single human or a group of humans to physically go through that data analyze it and then arrive at some conclusion from that data so there emerged the need of automated data analysis so data analytics data mining big data it came into being and to automatically analyze and extract results from the data you need the artificial intelligence now all these algorithms of artificial intelligence or data analytics they are expensive right so it is not possible for everyone every person to buy that or to have a data storage for storing large data so cloud computing came into being so you can hire a cloud so cloud is basically a network of computers which is uh, given on hire by a company and you can access that you can store your data there or you can use the applications that are stored on those computers for analyzing your data so cloud computing came into being and cognitive computing as we said artificial intelligence was required another thing along with artificial intelligence that is required is massive amount of signal processing because when we are talking of manufacturing there are machines which are working 24 7 the machines are expensive if a part fails it is not only the machine that stops but the whole assembly line comes to a halt bottlenecks are created right? so that is very costly so it is very important that the data from the different parts of the machine is constantly monitored and it is the signals which we receive they are processed and we are able to see that whether any signal is giving a hint of a malfunction or some defect which has just started to occur in the machine for example if the tooth or teeth of a gear they start wearing out there will be more vibration more chattering if a bearing it develops some faults in the inner race or in the balls or in the rollers again there will be some chattering so signals are being constantly processed and analyzed and for analyzing signals you need different types of time domain algorithms frequency domain time and frequency domain etc etc so signal processing is also a very imp important part of cognitive computing along with artificial intelligence like for example nowadays companies who have uh, expensive equipment like robots installed around the globe so what they do is because now getting the data is easier so some companies have made what is known as service intelligence units so where they <coughs> keep on receiving the data from their robots or other machinery installed across the globe so as the data arrives the data is analyzed by the computer systems and also by a small team of humans so if they find that some machine is developing some defect they will immediately inform the customer that your this machine is likely to develop this defect so during the next scheduled shutdown please look at this part because otherwise if a machine suddenly shuts down the customer will be mad madly after the company to send the service engineers at the earliest because he's losing money in a big way 
So <clears throat> all these systems now, when they are combined for improving the productivity, for improving the quality is known as industry four. Now, uh, lastly, in my part of the presentation, we will see a case study <coughs> of a Siemens electronics factory in Germany in the town of or in the city of Hamburg. Big companies like Siemens, ABB, Bosch, uh, they have set up some plants as a models for digital manufacturing. So this industry is one of them. So this slide is from the Siemens website only. So the photo you can see is taken on December 1, 2016. So this facility is a <coughs> prime example of an advanced product automation and has received numerous awards. The Amberg factory already combines the real and virtual worlds. Products communicate with machines and all production processes are optimally integrated and controlled via information <coughs> technology. So this factory, it basically uh, manufactures programmable logic controllers. So some of the salient features of this are that this factory makes customized products that customers who will order that I want a PLC with this specification, which is not say normally will, available off the shelf in the market. So they will order it. And they have a huge customer base of 6,000 customers worldwide. Uh, this 6,000 figure I took from uh, a magazine of American Society of Mechanical Engineers. But I also found in another source a figure of 60,000 customers. So I'm not sure which one is larger, but I have take, I'm sticking to this 6,000 customers because making customized products for 6,000 customers is also very difficult. Then the delivery of the product is done in 24 hours. That means once you receive the order after 24 hours, the custom, customized product is delivered. And on an average, one product is made every second. The factory has more than 75% automation. Now, when we say more than 75% automation, it may not look like a big number, but consider this, that here we are talking from right from the design stage to the delivery stage because at design stage you do require humans and some intermediate stages also you require humans so when we are talking of a factory which is only manufacturing there there will be factories which have more than 75 percent automation but here we are talking from the first stage to the last stage and the quality control is so excellent that they have a quality uh, uh, control of more than 99.9985 percent. That means these many parts are without any, these many products are without any defects. So practically you can say maybe a hundred parts in millions of products will may have some defect. Then more than 50 million conversations they take place between the machines, the different software agents, the computers in the industry per day. Now, how does the order processing take place? Uh, the customers order a PLC from Siemens. The customer may be sitting anywhere in the world. He does not know where this product is going to be made. So he will simply place the order with Siemens through its website and automatically, depending upon the product, the to be assigned to the suitable factory. So if it comes to the Amberg electronics plant, say the order is for a PLC, the computer system in Amberg electronics plant will assign a unique product code to that product. Then first, it will create a virtual model of that product, right? That is a complete 3D model with all the components in it. Using that model, it will define that what are the manual and automated processes needed to make this PLC. Then it will also compare this order with other orders which are already in the queue or which are in process to identify similar parts for faster processing. So here we're talking of kind of group technology which people study in CAD CAN. And then the system will automatically schedule the machines and the material handling equipment to produce that part. Now, 
the machines will start assembling the plcs using microchips or ic's capacitors transistors resistors etc and after each operation an inspection is done on the machine automatically parallelly another very beautiful thing happens that parallelly the a digital or a virtual model of the same uh, component is being manufactured in the virtual plant of the factory now this plant will take because it's a virtual plant so here the all the processes are ideal so if the time taken in the actual process and in the <coughs> virtual model they are different the system gets a hint that there may be some deviation some fault somewhere right? so it's a very marvelous uh, uh, model for that now uh, let us see a small three minute video which has been put up on youtube by the uh, siemens only systems. To achieve this, Siemens is focused on optimizing the complete value chain, becoming faster from product design to high quality production. In the electronic works on board, about 1,000 employees produce semantic switch gears and control systems at the highest level. One of the characteristic features of the best works in Europe, a distinction Hamburg was given, is the extraordinary high quality at a production rate of one product per second and a delivery time of 24 hours. In order to attain the best possible combination of both design and production, the Hamburg Works uses the product lifecycle management software portfolio, Team Center, NX, and Semantic IT, facilitate a near perfect closed loop data consistency. The rules and processes laid down in the system ensure that the data are transferred correctly and automatically with the right technical information. Team Center serves as a data backbone for all PLM tools. One of the competitive advantages of the Electronic Works Hamburg is that development and production are closely and systematically interlinked, which means that innovations can enter production very quickly. The manufacturing processes are optimized rapidly by means of digital prototypes at an early stage. By simulating the processes, the production can be adapted perfectly to the products to be manufactured. Thus, the time to market can be reduced by up to 50% with simultaneous increases in quality. Totally integrated automation and the TIA portal mean complete data consistency in automation and for coherent access to engineering, which enables the Electronic Works Hamburg to optimize its automation solutions. This in turn leads to cost savings of up to 25%. Moreover, the manufacturing execution system, Somatic IT, ensures maximum production rates and highest flexibility. To 
due to intelligent data linkage, it is possible to take influence on the production processes in real time. So the Electronic Works Hamburg can deliver its products at a quality rate of 99.9985%. This means only 1.5 of 100,000 manufactured products are faulty. By using Siemens industry software, the time to market cycles in the Electronic Works Hamburg were reduced significantly, while costs were cut. The quality was optimized to the highest possible degree and is now nearly at a rate of 100%. The high efficient logistics allow a production cycle of one product per second and a delivery time of 24 hours. The Hamburg plant is an impressive example for the sustainable success that can be achieved with integrated product and production life cycles. Okay, so there you saw the video. Uh, now, next we have a case study which we have carried out in our uh, institute. Uh, so that case study is that we have a flexible manufacturing system which is not IoT enabled. So this flexible manufacturing system, it consists of two CNC machines, one CNC lathe and the other one CNC milling. The system also has an automated storage and retrieval system and an image processing based quality control workstation. So the raw material is stored in the ASRS or automated storage and retrieval system. And there is a robot and a conveyor to transfer the raw material from the ASRS to different machines and transfer the finished product back to ASRS. So this robot, which is an industrial robot, and this is the conveyor. So we have a CNC lathe, a CNC milling uh, two, a quality control station three, uh, a robot four, and a conveyor five. So basically five things are there. And all these five things are controlled by a uh, PLC, which is of Vago make, and a computer, which provides the interface. So the programs for the individual machines are fed to the machines themselves directly. The program for the robot is also fed to the robot controller by a teach pendant, which is attached to this. The program is then run in the main system. So where the controller, uh, the PLC uh, program is fed that when to start and stop the machines. So now our idea is, <clears throat> to make this uh, uh, system fully IoT enabled. That means remotely we are able to switch on the complete system or remotely we are able to see which machine is working, which is off, or we are remotely able to extract data that how many parts have been manufactured, how many parts are currently being manufactured, which part is where, what is the status of the quality, etc., etc. But as a first step, uh, during last two months, what we have done is, first of all, connected the controller of this FMS to the cloud. So as on date, we have been able to implement one functionality into it that we are able to see through the cloud which machine is on and which machine is off during the work cycle. And this data is being uploaded on the cloud every 60 seconds. So this work has been done by uh, Mr. Jayant Gehlot, who will now uh, present you this work, but I think he, he may take around half an hour to explain uh, what all is to be done. Uh, so as we had proposed that we will have a, uh, say, uh, first session up to 11.30, which went up to nearly 12 o'clock. And so we are running half an hour by late. So I will just ask the centers if it is okay to continue now or if we have a lunch break and then we come back at two o'clock. So all the centers are requested to please give me because we'll need another half an hour.
We can continue now, sir. We can continue. Now? Okay. Uh, why I'm asking? Because sometimes some centers may have, say, kind of a lunch break or something. Today is a non working day for us. Uh, uh, Hello. Okay, so I. Okay. Any other center? Is there any other center which having a problem or they don't want to continue? They just respond. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll continue now. So I will request Jian to come and start with his uh, presentation. So you will have to. अगर टाइम लगना है दो बजे कर लेंगे भाई कल
ऐसे तो थोड़ी देर बैठने आता हेलो 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 गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो दिस इज माई प्रोजेक्ट आई ओ टी इनेबल्ड फ्लेक्सीबल मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सिस्टम so these are the contents first is objective second is fms system at neutral third is fms controller fourth is dll file what is dll file and next is how i know what is on off uh, on off status of all the machines the next is how to run a program and how to uploading this data in the cloud and last is execution of the program so the objective of my ppt my work is to remote access of the flexible manufacturing system which have following components on machines one is cnc turning cnc milling inspection system conveyor belt robot and automatic storage and retrieval system i so this is the flexible manufacturing system at nitra chandigarh so these are the two cnc workstation one is cnc turning lathe and cnc milling both are operated by siemens controller 808d and next is the inspection system it is a it checks whether a component is okay or not so basically it checks the internal diameter and the external diameter of a component if it is okay then it stores that component in the asrs that is automatic storage and retrieval system if the component is not okay then it put it in a rejection box the next is a conveyor belt the conveyor belt used to travel the transport the component from various workstations to asrs third is a robot it is a yaskawa motoman mh12 robot which is a six axis articulated robot which uh, the next is asrs automatic storage and retrieval system it has 36 cells it is a 6 by 6 matrix 3 by 6 matrix is first uh, these matrices store the raw material and the last three rows and column this matrix is store the finished product so first the robot put the material from the asrs raw material then all the process has been done on this product and the finally the robot store that in the finished component so this is the basically the fms system and this all system is controlled by the fms control that is vago 75882 it has two inter ethernet interfaces which used to connect to the system it is driven by a ip address which can be set by us set by address selection switch this is the fms controller it has a address selection switch by this switch you can you can generate an ip address of your own and these are the inter ethernet interfaces each of each interface can connect to a system so you can connect two systems so what the fms controller do is the fms controller communicate with these components cnc lathe c asrs conveyor belt robot inspection system and cnc milling system it is a slave and master type system fms controller is a master system which requests which put a request to all the machines and all these machines give them give him a information it is a two by two way communication fms controller put request to asrs then it gives information to again to controller and this all thing happen and for for extracting the data from the fms controller we need some information of of the controller one is the ip address 
uh, which is here uh, the fms control is 192.168.1.2 it is set by us the another is port number which is 502 is a standard port number for every wego processor third is a read count up to which register how many register i want to read so in this project i took five registers so i read the values for the five register and third is the function code function code basically signif basically is so whether you want to read the data or write the data so i'm using function code 3 which represent read the data from the controller the last is start address it is the starting address of the register and every vago controller has zero as a starting address so these are the information which we need to extract the data from the controller and also we need a dll file a dll file is a dynamic link library file so for this project i use vago modbus net dll file which is c coded.net class library which have many libraries like modbus tcp modbus udp modbus tcp ip which every library has a different function so for my project i use modbus tcp because i'm using working on tcp ip type controller so this so as you see in this picture fms controller is communicate with all the components of the fms system so then i want to extract the then i use a dll file with c sharp interface for c sharp interface i am using visual studio 2017 which is a c sharp and dot net framework by using these two components c sharp interface and dll file i create a program and when i run the program the fm the data has been extracted so how i collect the data so for this i am using five component of the fms one is cnc turning vmc inspection and controller zero represent off the status of the component and one represent the on status so i tried these combinations so i in first combination i put the cnc turning vmc milling machine inspection system off and controller on then create a program and extract the data in the second second combination i turn the cnc on and vmc inspection and controller are off so I try these different combinations to get the data. And the data which I got from these combinations are these. So this is value when all the machines are off, all CNC, VMC inspection are off, but the robot controller is on. Then I get these data. In the second, I get the data when the controller is on and everything else is off. In the third, CNC lathe is on and controller is on and everything else is off. Then I get this data. So in the fourth combination, I put VMC and robot controller on a CNC off. So I get these data. So I collect these data at the various combinations, as you can see. In this, I use VMC, CNC, robot all are on. <clears throat> and everything like Unreal all are off. Then I get these data. So I use eight combinations. By using eight combinations, I extract some data. And these data I use to get the status whether a machine is on or whether the machine is off. So how to create a program? I all I get the data. Then next to how to create a program. To create a project, you need a C sharp console application, C sharp interface interface with .NET framework, which is available in Visual Studio 2017 and it is freely available. And oh. add a Vago Modbus net.dll oh. file as a reference file. This oh. file contains some Modbus TCP methods which will be used to get the data, then write the code and then execute, then stop. By this process, I create a program and extract the data, and I've got these data. The data has been extracted, then the next step is how to upload it to the cloud. So, for this, I am using AWS a cloud which is provided by Amazon. It is Amazon Web Services. It is freely available. You can create your own, own account and it is give you one year free services. So it is, a, I'm using Amazon Web Services, which provides these services, Amazon EC2, Amazon RDS, Amazon Direct Connect, EBS, Amazon S3. The mainly we use is, which very popular, in uh, AWS is Amazon EC2. It is Elastic Compute Cloud. In this service, you can create your own computer, on virtual computer. So you can perform your operations program virtually on the cloud. 
and second is simple storage services which used to store the data in any format so i'm using s3 service this is amazon simple storage service <clears throat> and this i'm going to show how i use this so basically in this setup i have to create a bucket so i'm going to show how i create a bucket on the aws so first go to amazon web services open the second link here you can sign into the console so here are two op option one is you can create your aws account which is free so you can create from here and i have existing account so i just log into my account so these are the services which is provided by the aws for computation you can use ec2 storage s3 for database you can virtually create a database in the aws by using rds amazon redshift and microsoft these are the various services provided by aws these are freely available in your free account but when you use them you have to pay for your service so i am using s3 so it is in storage storage you can see it is there is s3 services first click on the s3 so here i create some bucket so i'm so first go to create bucket enter the bucket name so for this use lower case uh, lower case caps so i am giving meter chandi gar 01 and you have to choose your reason from where you want to store the data so for india i am using asia pacific mumbai you can use which send uh, which reason is your near so i think mumbai i using bombay so if you want to copy another security seconds from another bucket you can select from here if you are not then just go to next here it is your configuration option where watch out what you want to to your bucket next is your permissions who can access your bucket what you want to write or read and next is a review that you use as uh, the last check that what you did so nitro chandigarh 01 as pacific mumbai disabled disabled so next okay. click on create bucket so it create a bucket in this app as you can see it is a nitro chandigarh so you can upload any file here and you can access this file from everywhere anywhere from the world <coughs> so this is i create how i create the bucket So for storing the data which I extracted from the FMS, I need a bucket. So I create a bucket here. Correct. So it, I create a bucket. <clears throat> the next is I create a bucket and I have a data. So next step is to link my bucket. Link my bucket to the program. So the program. can extract the data and upload upload that to the cloud so for this we i use an api in c sharp which i downloaded from this site and you can also download from this site and it gives you two dll files aws sdk.s3.dll and aws sdk.core.dll these two are used will be used for uploading the data for to the cloud the location of these uh, dlls are here in your when you install it then it created a file in program files 86 in at this location from here you can copy this and paste in your program so i have uh, create a program so i can show you so here i use a uh, So 
this is the program of my FMS system. I create a program. So first I here add the Vago Modbus DLL. It is a DLL file which I downloaded and add here. And here I add uh, these two DLL files which I downloaded from the SDK files. And for this, I have to create a, prog a function named Amazon S3 uploader, which which will give information on which bucket I want to store my data. So for this, I'm using FMS data main. So I store the data here and it is used for creating the file name, which I use a date and time. So you can every time I create a file, it takes the date and time and it generate a file there. So this is the program where I use this information as I, so I can connect to my <clears throat> controller. And uh, this I can show whether a machine is on or off. This is the program. I'm going to execute it and we can also get the status so for this first build the program it is built and start without debugging as you can see they start doing the status of the machines so the next two if it is there or not so i'm logging to my account aws where i store the return in this bucket when I, then you can see there is a file name 17 october 119 so it is a time a file is uploaded to that cloud whenever i refresh it another file is uploaded so this is how i uploaded the data to the cloud by using aws so as you see, it increases the file as you, it is uploaded to the cloud. So for this, it uploaded two files and it takes 60 seconds to upload a file. So every 60 seconds, a file will be uploaded. So as you can see, the file size increases that is generate the data and data. So for, for <clears throat> So it is how the data is uploaded to the cloud and every file contains the data and the status of the machine, whether it is on or off. Every time I refresh it, so it takes one minute. So on third, one and 19 of a file is being uploaded in uh, third, 120 file is arrived. And next is this on 121. So it is a real time access, remote access of our machines from whenever I want whether my machine is on or off or which machine is on or off, I can get the data, get the information from anywhere in the world by using this cloud. So this was, as you can see, the data has been uploaded to the cloud. So this is my project and how I uploaded data to the cloud through IoT. As I execute the program, So this is my project of IoT enabled flexible manufacturing system. So is there any question from any center? Uh, hello, sir. We are from Kamanshi Pram. Do you have a question in Shalai? Yes, sir. OK. Uh, now, using the bucket, we are able to upload all the data. That is fine. Suppose if I want to retrieve the data, 
and if i want to plot the graph in a gui or are there any specific services for that so you have want to plot the graph between the data yes yes sir, there is service available in the amazon aws amazon web services in al analytics portion where you can get uh, and do whatever you want to do with your data you want to analyze your data you want to plot a graph you want uh, to get the information what your data indicates you want what, on which trend your data is face going through so you can do it in aws amazon oh, web aws itself has okay my another doubt is okay. Uh, okay these fms are quite expensive suppose if you want to teach your students to make a small uh, system which sends signals to turn on the machine and to turn it off and if i want to connect it to the cloud uh, which uh, microcontroller do you suggest or which plc sir you can use arduino for this you know that's fine is it yes, enough yes sir you can use arduino and connect some motor through it so whenever a motor is start or you use an led so whenever a led is start blink it can upload it to the cloud Okay, uh, you have the CNC machines and the Yashkava robot, right? Yes, sir. Uh, to uh, give them signal to start or to stop, uh, what kind of signals will be sent? Is it uh, just simply binary zero or one, or is there any specific signal with code in it? No, it is a. It gives only binary signal, whether you want to or off. So, will we be able to turn on the machine using Arduino itself? No, you can't turn on the machine through Arduino. what whenever a machine on it gives signal to the microcontroller and the, all the programming is on the system so you can't turn a machine through a controller you can get the status of the machine whether it is on or off you can't control from the controller okay okay so in this project we are just reading the data out of it so we cannot uh, control the machine right no no we can't control the we can access the data whether a machine is on whether a machine is off and which machine is on which is off Okay thank you so much sir really like the project thank you so much we done great our next part of this project will be to control the machines so this is the this is the beginning of the project so as first step he has only extracted the data about the status of the machine so in the next part of the project some other student will work on as to how to control it Okay okay thank you so much sir Okay uh, Is there any other center connected Uh so with that we uh, come to the end of this 3 day program uh, I would like to invite some feedback from the centers about this program because this is the first program that we have conducted in iot so we would like uh, to have a five day program in the future so any feedback that any additional topics that the centers might want to be included in the next version of this program so we would like the feedback from the centers Hello, so we are from CSVM University, Kanchipuram. Yeah, please. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, for uh, taking this initiative, because you know Industry 4.0 has been over a long or uh, over a period of time, and none of us uh, were aware of it. So now IoT is being uh, you know uh, the next generation, which is very important. Thank you so much for giving an, uh, a session on that. next thing what i would like to suggest is it will be nice if we if possible if all of the centers could uh, you know buy some basic components kits and it will be nice if you do that live over there and we could also try to uh, do that by ourselves so that our students could also learn better so if we take the initiative and we build the projects projects they will build more number of projects so okay, okay. so i got your point so maybe next time we will press the delegate Okay, so another thing is uh, knowing the history of something is very important. But you know, it it'll be even better if it is slightly reduced. I'm sorry. Uh, knowing history of something is uh, very important. I do know it, 
but you know for, uh, uh, but generally uh, when we go too deep into the history uh, it could be nice if it is reduced we concentrate less on the history of something so what do you want sir uh, sir i have not got exactly your point okay okay we are talking a lot about history of uh, certain things now sir okay okay but so that that he was presented uh, because uh, in previous lectures we had the uh, uh, concepts of iot right that is about the internet about the sensors about the controllers so we wanted to say that how did we arrive at digital manufacturing okay okay what were the various technologies that have contributed to this so that is why a brief overview was presented okay sir thank you sir thank you so much that's it excuse me sir it from badu sahib yes please yes sir today's session was really very very useful and all the session was practical today so we hope that next time whenever you organize such type of program today uh, the session was really a practical and very useful and effective one so we hope that uh, you will continue uh, like this way in future also so it was very useful for all of us okay right. thanks a lot sir thanks a lot thank you for asking for this program sir so good afternoon sir this is from western university Hello, sir. The overall content of the course is very nice, and uh, I would like to suggest that you should also do one course on industry 4.0. Also, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. The overall content of the course is very nice, and uh, I think this is the first time that IoT in Manchester is uh, conducted by Great Britain. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, sir. So, so, sir, it's very nice. Okay, thank you so much. Thank yes, sir. Next one is what is the development. Okay, so from Bharatiya Skill Development University, Jaipur. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. We can hear you. We can hear you. Sir, this is Bharatiya Skill Development University. Hello. Sir, we can hear you. Please go on. Sir, the course content is very good. The the execution of this course is very good. We have a lot of knowledge. In this case, for sir, and uh, in future I would like to suggest uh, some hand-on experience uh, for participants in this education. Uh, well, uh, you see, in our ICT course, uh, <laughs> we can show you some practical thing, but we cannot uh, have the hands-on experience at your end. So, for that, in future, we will also be conducting the programs. Uh, here, so there you can send your uh, teachers. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Okay, so uh, thank you all the centers for joining in this program, and thank you for your feedback. So we come to end of this three-day program. So we hope that in future we will be able to conduct this program in a better way. i thank you all the participants the head, heads the principal director and the management of all the institutes to connect